Hey there everyone, this is Cloud Chief. In today's video, I wanted to go over Empyrean armor, how you obtain it and upgrade it. Interestingly enough, the armor is split up by jobs and groups, and it's only in Scars and Hero Zones. You don't get any Empyrean armor in the actual Vision Zones, which is weird, but they didn't actually release the armor until Scars. Head, legs, and feet all come from Ottawa Chasm, Miserix, or Vonkroll. As for the body and the hands, they come from Al Tepa, from the range, and from Grolberg. The jobs are actually broken out by which zone. Monk, War, White Mage, Black Mage, Red Mage, and Thief, you can get in Ottawa Chasm and Al Tepa. That's where you would obtain the armor pieces. For Paladin, Dark Knight, Beast, Bard, and Ranger, that would be at Miserix and the range. And then for the rest of the jobs, Sam, Nin, Dragoon, Summoner, Blue, Core, Pup, Dancer, and Scholar, you can get them in Vunkrel and in Grawlberg. So now that we've covered how the armor's all broken out, let's actually talk about obtaining it. Getting the base armor, for the most part, is relatively easy to do. Firstly, you can go ahead and get the headpiece in whichever scar zone was associated with whatever job you want, just talking to the crew or prospector at the start of the zone, and it'll cost you 5,000 crewer to pick up whatever headpiece you want. As for the legs, you actually get them from Bastion Prefect for 300 resistance credits. And you get them from the associated zone where I said the jobs for scars. Just go to the double zero conflux and then talk to the Bastion Prefect and then just say that you want to buy it for 300 resistance credits. Just to be aware, you can actually trade in copper slips for resistance credits. So you actually don't have to participate to accumulate the points. You can just turn in copper slips and then buy the armor that way. And then as for feet, you can actually get them out of gold chests, and we'll talk about farming them in a second. As for the hands, you get them the same way you get the head. You can just go buy it for 5,000 crew or from the crew or prospector from a hero zone. You just need to go to the heroes associated zone to go ahead and purchase them. And then for the body pieces, you actually can get the body pieces in the hero zones by talking to the domain tactician that is also near the start of each zone and paying 1500 domain notes for whatever piece that you want. The best way to get domain notes is to fight NMs in any hero zones. So that covers all the uh, armor pieces and how you obtain them. So let's talk more in detail about the feet. So you get the feet out of the associated scar zone with whatever job you want and you get them out of gold chests. So that means you need to be building amber light, doing elemental weapon skills, or getting amber light out of red chests. From what I've seen, the ideal range on amber light should be between about 50 and 150. That seems to give you the highest potential for getting feet armor out of the chests. Now, I have gotten armor outside of those values, but... I'm just saying that it seems like the highest percentage seems to be somewhere between like 50 and 150 because you start getting a lot more key items once you're above 150 and below 50 it just doesn't seem like it's really enough that you're even really getting many gold chests to begin with. So basically what I like to do is I like to just go in, build up some pearl light and then after that, just start gathering up a bunch of mobs and AoE them down with magic weapon skills. And that way you're building amber light and then you're getting a bunch of chests. And you just keep, you know, opening gold chests until you get the feet that you want. Now also, even if you don't want these feet, I would actually grab any other Empyrean feet you get. The reason is, you can take any three Empyrean feet and they don't have to be in the same zone. So you, it can be one from each zone if you really want. If you go ahead and head to Miserix Coast, right near the start, there's an NPC called Lame Deer. If you go ahead and trade him any three foot armors, you can then pick any foot armor that you want as long as it's not one of those three that you're trading. Why you would trade three for one to get one the same one back is beyond me, but you can trade any three in to get 
you know the one that you want so even if you're say trying to get one for every job once you've accumulated it either get it upgraded or put it on the uh, portal moogle like you know get it so it's not on your character so that way you can obtain the other one again and that way you have more options for trading in so that way you can get all the ones that you really want so really it's easy to get all the armor except for really the feet. The feet are the only thing that you really need to put in some time, energy, and effort to obtain just getting the base piece. Although, even if you're at the level when you can equip it, like not at level cap, but you just happen to be at that level, the armor is not really worth using until you go ahead and upgrade. So to upgrade these armor pieces, you need eight slips for the associated piece and job, or 10 if it's the body piece. You can get these slips off of NMs, and you get the head seals from Ottawa Chasm, you get the leg seals from Miserix, and you get the feet seals from Vunkrol. As for all the hero zones, all three hero zones can drop both hands and body seals. Ideally, when you're trying to farm these seals off of the NM, you want to be yellow proccing, so you want to proc with magic. So ideally you're going to be like black mage bard or black mage ninja, so that way you're covering as many procs as possible. Basically to hit all the yellow procs and have 100%, you would need black mage, bard, ninja, and blue mage, and then if it happened to be around lights day, for light based magic you would need a white mage basically when going for the seals you just want to proc yellow on the nm and then get some treasure hunter on it and that's going to give you the maximum chance for getting the drops i personally think it's better to proc yellow than it is treasure hunter so while treasure hunter is helpful and you want treasure hunter especially even when you're proccing yellow to maximize your drops Proccing yellow does guarantee some seals, where Treasure Hunter doesn't necessarily guarantee anything when farming for these. However, it is quite possible to gather all the seals for everything that you want without ever proccing yellow once. So once you have gathered up the seals and you have the armor piece, just go and head to the Armor Magian Moogle up in Ruilud Garden and trade him the armor, then trade the armor and the seals to the box, and then trade the armor back to him, and you've upgraded it to plus one. Now at this point for Empyrean armor, you can upgrade it further to a plus two version, but that may or may not be necessary, because now that it's plus one, you can now make the armor 109, and then from 109 make it 119 which is ideally where you want it to be. At the time of this video, getting it to 119 in its plus one version is the current cap for the armor. Unlike Relic and Artifact that can go plus two and plus three, currently in the game Empyrean armor can only go to plus one, making it typically not as useful as Relic and Artifact gear. However, this armor is still definitely useful in terms for mages and for utility stuff. It's just not the best for TPing and weapon skilling. However, there's still plenty of job abilities and traits and other things that the Empyrean armor does augment. So you definitely do want to pick up some of this armor depending on what job you're playing. So for now, I'm just going to talk about plus twoing it in its like level 80-ish state that it's in. So from here there are additional NMs in both the Scar Zones and Hero Zones and they've even added some of the NMs in Vision Zones of having these gems and stones and stuff that will actually allow you to upgrade to a plus two. Basically it's the same kind of deal, you just need to farm up six of these for any piece except for the body and the body piece you need nine. Same thing as the seals, you go ahead and trade the plus one piece to the Moogle, then trade whatever item along with the armor to the box next to the Moogle, then after you've turned it all in, just trade the armor and then he'll go ahead and upgrade it to a plus two version. Once you have it a plus two version, it will now cost you less chapters to upgrade it to the 109 version than if it was only the plus one. So depending on if you have a lot of 
1 through 5 chapters easily available or easily obtained, you might not care about trying to plus 2 your armor and might only care about trying to get it to plus 1 and then immediately jumping it to 109. If getting chapters is a little more difficult, considering Abyssia is like level 80 to 90-ish mobs, being 119, you should be able to easily handle it and you could farm them up and then you need less chapters later for making your armor 109. So which path you should go on, I kinda, you need to make your own judgment call on that. I would say for most people though, just getting it to 109, unless you have the, the stones and, and jewels laying around to plus two it, that you shouldn't even really worry about it and just get it to plus one and then immediately try and make it 109 from there. So let's talk about the process of actually getting it to 119. So once you have it in the level 80 to 90 version, either plus one or plus two, you then need to go to Port Juno and talk to Money Set at I-8. You do need to have C access for this NPC to interact with and actually to be able to do the upgrades. So you will have to make that progress through COP, just be aware. And so to do the upgrade, you just need to trade the required items and then wait a game day and she will upgrade the piece. If you are turning in a plus one piece, you will need 10 chapters. Or if you have the plus two version, you will only need five chapters. Chapter ones are used for head pieces. Chapter twos are for body pieces. Chapter three are for hand pieces. Chapter four are for leg pieces. And chapter five are for feet pieces. In addition to needing the either plus one or plus two piece, needing the chapters, you will also need Empyrean upgrade items. So like Briarius helms. So if I was say doing war, War uses Briarius Helms upgrade. You would need five Helms to upgrade all five pieces to at least uh, 109. In addition, you will need items that you can typically get from high tier battles just as extra items like a Phoenix Feather, Marlboro Fiber, Beetle Blood, Damascus Cloth, or Ox Blood. After you trade all those items, like I said, wait a game day, and then congratulations, you now have the 109 piece. Continue to do that until you have all the pieces that you want upgraded 80 to 90 Abyssia part to level 109. And there is a very similar process upgrading it from 109 to 119. So basically you trade in uh, to money set the 109 piece along with eight chapters that are either chapter six seven eight nine and ten same thing as before where chapter six is the head chapter seven is the body chapter eight is hands chapter nine is legs and chapter ten is the feet so you go ahead and turn in the piece turn in whatever number uh chapter that you need you need to turn in eight of them and then you need to turn in a different amount of etched memories and you can actually get these from Vigari along with a boss drop item that is also from Vigari whether that's Defiant Sweat, Dark Matter, uh, Macul Horn, Tartarian Chain, or Plavid Effluvium. So after turning in the required items and then awaiting another game day Congratulations, you now have your armor upgraded to 119. Different job ability and augment stuff that you get, not to mention like white mage pants, they give you MP back for how much you cure. These are just some really good armor pieces. While they're not going to be what you need in terms of accuracy and weapon skill damage, at least not until we get the plus two and plus three versions of this, which I'm sure will come at some point. But for now, at the time of making this video, we only have the 119 version, but it's still really good for utility and or mage type purposes for augmenting abilities. So I would definitely do some research and check out if you do want any of this Empyrean armor, and I'm sure we're going to want the plus two and plus three versions once they finally come out. And that covers Empyrean armor, how to obtain it, and how to get it all the way upgraded to 119. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you got some value out of it, and as always, may you have success in all you do.